We know that during the last few weeks before the assassination, Oswald lived in a furnished room in the Oak Cliff section of Dallas while his wife and children lived with Mrs. Ruth Payne in Irving, Texas, a suburb of Dallas. Oswald had applied for his job at the book depository at the suggestion of a neighbor of Mrs. Payne's, Mrs. Lenny Mae Randall. Mrs. Randall's brother, 19-year-old uh, Buell Wesley Frazier, was employed at the book depository and traveled between Irving and Dallas every day. Oswald spent his weekends with his wife at the Payne home in Irving. He would ride out on Friday evenings with Frazier, and Frazier would drive him back to Dallas on Monday mornings. This pattern, however, was interrupted on November 21st, Thursday, before the assassination, when uh, Oswald rode out to Irving with Frazier. On Friday morning, the morning of the assassination, he rode back to the book depository with Frazier, carrying the brown pa paper parcel that the commission concluded contained the Mandlicker Carcano rifle. Here is a 1964 television interview in which Frazier describes the incident. He come to me on Thursday, November the 21st, and asked me could he uh, ride home with me that afternoon. And I said, well, yes. And I said, well, why are you going home this afternoon? And he replied that he wanted to go home and pick up some curtain rods where he could put some curtains up in his apartment. And I said, oh, very well. And then I said, uh, well, will you be going home with me tomorrow also? And he said, no. He said he wouldn't be going home with me on the 22nd. So he told you that he wanted to come out there and pick up some curtain rods, and this was on Thursday morning. Yes. And at that time, he told you that he would not ride home with you Friday night. Right. The first time that Frazier told that story was on the night of November 22nd, 1963. And as a matter of fact, at the time that he told it, he was under arrest. And that incident uh, does not come across in the Warren Report, and it's not mentioned by any of the students of the Warren Commission. Um, but it is documented in volume 24 of the hearings on pages 292 and 293, which is a Dallas police report of the incident. <clears throat> a warrant was issued for Frazier's arrest in the early evening, and he was tracked down in Irving, Texas, where he was visiting his father at a hospital. Uh, he was placed under arrest and taken to his home where his room was searched. Uh, an Enfield 303 rifle was confiscated, uh, along with a box of ammunition and other personal effects. And he was taken to the Dallas police headquarters for interrogation. And that's where he first told that story. Uh, sometime around 9 p.m. that evening, uh, he was sent home by uh, Captain Will Fritz, who was conducting the investigation. Um, he was put into a Dallas police car and taken in the general direction of Irving. But before the police car reached Irving, it received a radio message from police headquarters to bring him back. On his return, he was asked if he'd be willing to take a polygraph test regarding the uh, circumstances of the uh, story he had told uh, about the curtain rods and about driving Oswald uh, to and from the book depository. Apparently he agreed to take that polygraph test. <coughs> and when I was in Dallas in 1973, I spoke to Mr. Paul Bentley, who at that time was the senior polygraph examiner on the Dallas police force. Now, there's, there's one other area that I didn't get into, that I didn't really know about. Uh, this guy, Fraser, who uh, knew Oswald before the assassination, I haven't had an awful lot of success trying to hunt him down. Apparently, he's in the Army now. Uh, but I did discover something of interest, that uh, he, he was arrested by Captain Fritz the night of the assassination and uh, given a polygraph examination. Now, I was wondering, uh, I know that you had a problem with your ankle, so I assume you were not the one. I don't recall that even occurring. I think uh, had he been given an examination, I would have known about it. But uh, this, this may be 100% true, and I, this I is in, recall. This is in the Warren Report. I think it's in, uh, yeah. uh, no, wait a minute, no, I'm not sure it's whether it's in the Warren Report. It's our researchers at Penthouse got mm -hmm. this out, and... Uh, I can't recall, uh, Frazier may have been in, uh, 
if this was the night of the assassination, I would not have been on duty. Right, okay. So it would have been uh, uh, possibly R.D. Lewis mm -hmm. if the examination was given. I think R.D. was working for me at that time. R.D. Lewis was, in fact, the polygraph examiner who had given the polygraph exam to Buell Wesley Frazier, according to the police report uh, published in volume 24 of the hearings. Uh, in 1973, R.D. Lewis was still on the Dallas police force, and uh, I called him there, and uh, this is the conversation that we had. Detective Lewis, my, yes. na my name is George O2. I'm a uh, freelance writer, and uh, I'm working on a story about the uh, Kennedy assassination. And I was wondering if I might have a few moments of your time now. Uh, if this isn't an inconvenient moment, uh, I'd like to discuss a couple points with you. I don't know where I can be a hit. Well, I was talking to Mr. Paul Bentley earlier on, and uh, w I asked him, I interviewed him at some length, and uh, about his recollections of the uh, evening of the, the arrest of, of Oswald. And I asked him if uh, he uh, knew if, if Oswald had been given a, a polygraph examination, and he said no, he didn't think he had. Uh, he would have been the one to do it, uh, although he was uh, he w was off that evening. I kind of he injured his ankle uh, during the arrest, mm -hmm. and he said that uh, uh, if there was such a polygraph examination given, uh, it probably would have been yourself who did it. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't give him one. He wouldn't give a polygraph examination. He was not. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh, there was. There was another question. Uh, I, uh, our researchers tell me that there was a polygraph examination given to uh, this gentleman who was a, an associate of Oswald's, a man named uh, Buell Wesley Fraser, on uh, uh, the night of, of November 22nd. Uh, would you have been the gentleman who, who gave that examination? I'm not familiar with it. I don't remember conducting any examination whatsoever on, on Oswald or anyone connected with Oswald. In other words, you didn't you did not give anybody a polygraph examination that night. Uh, uh, no, uh, not we're not, we're not connected with Oswald. Not connected with Oswald. I see. Uh, okay. Well, thank you very much. I'm sorry to. Uh, That's all right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bye now. Bye. This was especially interesting news because in 1963 there were only two polygraph examiners on the Dallas police force, uh, Paul Bentley and R. D. Lewis, and now both of them had. Uh, told me they knew nothing about the Buell Wesley Frazier polygraph examination. Uh, additionally, in the uh, Dallas Police Report published in Volume 24, it says that uh, Lewis was called from home uh, sometime late in the evening of November 22nd, and he made a special trip to the police station to give this polygraph examination, which took place uh, between uh, half past 11 and uh, 20 past 12 uh, midnight. Uh, so. If I'm to believe R.D. Lewis, uh, then either he did not give this examination or else uh, he forgot being called from his home in the middle of the night uh, to give an examination uh, in connection with the investigation of a presidential assassination. I decided to see if I could check the story out further by calling Lieutenant Gerald Hill, who uh, was one of the officers who played a major role in the events of November 22, 1963, and uh, was still on the force in uh, 1973. Um, I called Lieutenant Hill on the telephone, and uh, this is what he told me when I raised the subject of the uh, Frazier polygraph examination. Uh, let's see, I've been trying to get a hold of a guy named, rather, Buell Wesley Fraser, um, and this is, uh, this is the guy, I guess it was his carpool rider out to Irving. Right. D did you know him? No, I never did even see him. Uh, okay, so, uh, okay. Um, Fraser is an interesting character, by the way. I, um, uh, our researchers sent me a copy of, from one of the 26 volumes that said, uh, he had been given a polygraph examination mm -hmm. on the night of the assassination. Apparently, he seemed pretty suspicious to Captain Fritz. But I, I haven't... Well, no, now, he had to be suspicious to somebody else other than Fritz, because Fritz didn't believe in polygraphs. He wouldn't use them. Is that right? This is right. Well, well now... He'll lose the case before he put anybody on the polygraph. Well, now, this is interesting, because according to the Warren Report, 
A polygraph examination was administered by uh, a gentleman named Lewis, R.D. Lewis. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, but I spoke to Mr. Lewis, and he, he said he didn't recall giving him the polygraph examination yeah. or anybody else that night. Yeah. Uh, and, and like I say, if it was a fit show, uh, probably no. Now, this may have been a situation where he was arrested by either the sheriff's office or arrested by the Irving PD, and they utilized our polygraph section to give the test. But if the guy was Fritz's prisoner, he did not get a polygraph because uh, Fritz's own men, as long as he was there, if they wanted to put somebody on the polygraph, they had to do it behind his back. Is that right? Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. He was, uh, he didn't, uh, didn't believe in us. I found this very difficult to believe. I called Captain Fritz, who at that time was living in a hotel in downtown Dallas. Uh, Captain Fritz uh, very politely declined to discuss any aspect of the case with me, including uh, what his attitude was towards the polygraph. I called uh, Mr. Paul Bentley, uh, who was uh, the uh, senior polygraph examiner I had uh, first discussed the uh, Frazier matter with, and um, I asked him uh, if he could confirm uh, what Hill had told me. Bentley speaking. Uh, Mr. Bentley, this is George O'Toole again. Yes, George. I'm sorry to bother you again. I just had one, uh, two, two details I wanted to check with you. All right. Uh, I heard that uh, Captain Fritz uh, had absolutely no faith in the polygraph, and he never used it. Can you confirm that? <laughs> I cannot confirm that. It was used constantly in the Homicide Robbie Bureau. Uh, so it's the, the, the individual who told me this uh, said that uh, Fritz just didn't believe in the polygraph. And I ran many, many examinations for Captain Fritz personally. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, well, this, Many guy, of them. this guy got the story wrong. And I thought he had, but yeah. I, wanted, I wanted to check no. it out. I really uh, found it very surprising that uh, Gerald Hill had gotten that story wrong because he'd served on the force since 1958, and uh, Fritz uh, had retired around 1970, and that meant that they were both on the force together for 12 years, uh, during which time Fritz was chief of the uh, Rob Robbery and Homicide Bureau. So it, uh, it struck me as peculiar that a uh, uh, senior detective such as Lieutenant Hill wouldn't know whether or not uh, uh, Captain Fritz uh, had uh, faith in the polygraph, and as a matter of fact, it's extraordinary that he would be misinformed on the subject. I decided to uh, check the matter out further with uh, another detective still on the force named uh, Richard Stovall, who... Uh, by all accounts, uh, was present uh, during the Fraser polygraph examination. Sergeant Stovall, my name is George O'Toole. I'm not sure how, whether I have the, the right Richard Stovall or not, uh, but I'm looking for the gentleman who uh, was uh, involved with uh, investigating Wesley Frazier uh, during the Kennedy assassination time with uh, Detective uh, Gus Rose. Was that yourself? Mm -hmm. um, I was trying to reach Detective Rose, and apparently he's uh, uh, away at school, and I uh, don't know where to reach him. Um, I wonder if you'd mind uh, chatting with me for a few moments. We'll take too much of your time. Uh, but would that be all right? Well, of course, it just depends. Well, can I you another one? Either you or what you want or whatever. Okay, well, let me, let me uh, describe what I'm doing. I'm writing a, a magazine article uh, on the uh, 10th anniversary of the uh, um, uh, Kennedy assassination, and uh, it's just uh, really a recapitulation of uh, the events of the assassination and, uh, and then uh, things that have happened since then. Uh, and uh, I was uh, talking to uh, uh, old, uh, Jerry Hill and uh, uh, Paul uh, Bentley and a number of other people who were involved with the arrest and uh, we got to talking about polygraph examinations and whether uh, Oswald had given one and apparently he, he had not. Uh, but I was looking in the Warren report, and it said there that uh, Bureau Wesley Frazier had been given a polygraph examination. And uh, I, was trying to rec I was trying to find out who had given him this uh, examination and what the circumstances surrounding that were. And I was wondering if you uh, recall that. No, I don't know who gave him the examination. In fact, I don't, I don't remember who was giving the examinations at that time. Uh-huh. 
Uh, but do you recall that he was given an examination? Well, I, I don't know. We brought, we picked, you know, several people up and brought them to the Homeside Bureau back during that time. Uh -huh. And Wesley Frazier was one of them. Uh, uh -huh. Of course, you know, without looking back through notes or anything, I couldn't tell you for sure. You, you don't recall? I do. I do feel like that he did have one. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But you don't remember the details of it as to who gave no, it? Because, see, when they get those down, we went up there. Uh -huh. Just the polygraph examiner was. Just the polygraph examiner and the subject? As far as I know. Uh -huh. you know. Right. Okay. Apparently, uh, Mr. Stovall forgot uh, that uh, he himself had been present during the uh, Fraser polygraph examination because that's uh, what he told the Warren Commission under oath in 1964. And I'll quote briefly from the transcript of his testimony. Uh, he was examined by uh, Mr. Ball of the Commission's staff. Mr. Ball, when you took the polygraph, you were present during the polygraph examination of Fraser, weren't you? Mr. Stovall, yes, sir. Mr. Ball, and during this examination, did you have before you the affidavit which Frazier had made? Mr. Stovall, no, sir, I didn't. Mr. Ball, you didn't at that time. Mr. Stovall, no, sir. Mr. Ball, who did the questioning? Mr. Stovall, R.D. Lewis, he's the polygraph operator. Uh, since it appeared that R.D. Lewis was, in fact, the polygraph operator, and uh, he had given Buell Wesley Frazier a polygraph examination, I decided to uh, call him once more and uh, try and refresh his memory. Lloyd? Uh, Mr. Lewis. Yes. Uh, this is George O'Toole. Uh, you and I had a uh, telephone conversation about two weeks ago. I'm a freelance writer. Do you recall the conversation? Um, I hate to bother you again and make a nuisance of myself, but there's something that I'm uh, trying to check out. It's a small detail. And I'd like to try and jog your memory a little bit. Uh, we were talking about uh, polygraph examinations that you gave on the evening of the, uh, the 22nd of November. And as I recall, you did not recollect giving one to uh, uh, Buell Wesley Frazier at that time. All pen, no. I don't remember giving anybody one. Well, uh, I spoke to uh, um, Gus Rose, and uh, he recollects that, uh, that you did. And so I found a reference to it in the Warren report that said you gave uh, this man, uh, Buell Wesley Fraser, a polygraph. And it's also in uh, Jim Bishop's book, not that that's an authority, uh, the day Kennedy was shot. And uh, you, you have absolutely no recollection of this. I don't remember it, no. I may have. I don't remember running the guy. Well, according to... I've only read about, you know, 15 times, you know. Yeah, I know, and it's 10 years ago. But, but in the book, it says that... Uh, that you were called at home that evening uh, to come in and give the polygraph examination. So what day was Kennedy shot on? He was shot on a Friday. What, what was the day? The 22nd of November. 22nd. And uh, I worked that evening. You worked that evening, so what time would you have gotten off? 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. Well, that's... I remember, because my son was there. Uh, I had my son, Daddy. I remember when I... When Kennedy got shot, I was on the way to work, and I stopped at a pawn shop to look for a, a radio or something. But I don't know what it was I was looking for, but I stopped at a pawn shop somewhere at South Haskell. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just before I got out of the car, I ran uh, one, something like that, I don't remember what time it was. Uh, I got out of the car to go in the store, and uh, uh, might have been later than that. And he came out over the news that he'd been shot. I came on downtown and went to work, so I had to work at 3 that day mm -hmm. and got off at 11, so there wouldn't be any reason for him to call me home. So, well, this was, uh, according to the report, this, they called you, I don't know, about 11, after, I think it was after 11 o'clock. Oh, well, that may have been so long. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you recollect giving anybody a polygraph test that day, that evening? Well, now that you bring that up, it seems like I did get off that night and went home, and then they called me back. But, uh, but I don't remember any of the details about it or anything. You don't remember who it was that you, you gave it to? Uh, I couldn't. My life depended on it. I couldn't remember. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, they wouldn't uh, If I read a report, you know, I might recollect and might remember, but uh, just to say I run anybody, I do remember running a case or two regarding the... Uh, Kennedy deal, you know, 
some out, you know, not people that were accused of shooting him or something, but uh, but uh, but all really the details of the circumstances. I see, I see. Well, that that would have been. But I don't remember it being that day, you know. Uh, uh-huh. Well, like I think I run several people, but uh, it seemed to me like the best I remember it was days after, and not the same day. You know, I just. But there again, I could be mistaken that about that part of it. I see. Well, it was a long time ago, and I guess. Uh, Okay, well, I'm sorry to bother you again. I had some, uh, you know, uh, what was the detail I supposed to have been regarding it, you know? Well, um, according to the Warren report, this is uh, this is the sequence of events. Uh, Frazier, who was uh, uh, Oswald's associate, I mean, he, he drove back and forth with him to Irving on weekends. Frazier um, uh, was questioned by the police, and he told them that Oswald had come in that morning with a package that Oswald claimed contained curtain rods. And uh, he also said that... And he told them that Oswald had come in that morning with a package that Oswald claimed contained curtain rods. And uh, he also said that Oswald had declared that he wouldn't be going back to Irving that weekend. Now, uh, they released Fraser, and uh, they put him in a police car. I think uh, I think it was uh, Officer Stovall who was driving him home. Uh, and uh, halfway out to Irving, uh, he got a radio message to bring him back. And they brought him back, and they asked him if he'd take a polygraph test. Now, according to the... Uh, According to the report I've got, uh, they called you at home and asked you to come in. It took you about an hour to get in. You got in about, uh, uh, oh, sorry, around midnight, I guess. Uh, and he was given the test. Now, I don't know precisely what they asked him, but I presume it was to verify his story that uh, uh, Oswald had this package of curtain rods, which what he claimed to be curtain rods. And I do remember letting some guy regarding a package and knowing Oswald and curtain rods and and so forth. Now, I do remember that, but I didn't remember it being the, the same day or even within the same 24 hour period that the, that the killing happened. I see. Uh, but I do remember when somebody uh, regarding some curtain rods and, and uh, been riding back and forth as I was willing, and, and did the guy see any gun and so forth. And so on I like see. That. That's the guy. Yeah. Right. Now, now, I know this is asking a lot, but do you remember offhand the results of that uh, polygraph examination? Would you get a clear indication that uh, the man was telling the truth? I don't, I don't offhand, I don't remember, but I'd say that, that it did, otherwise it would have stuck with me. Uh-huh. Uh, but I remember things more or less most of the time that, uh, that are adverse. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, that are negative, uh, because uh, if he had been lying or guilty, or what I consider lying or guilty, uh, my intention would have been to have tried to evoke him. And uh, if I don't break one, uh, now you remember this, this police talk, so I'm not, uh, uh, if I didn't break him, then I would feel like I had a job left undone, and, and so I don't, I don't remember anything like that along that line, so uh, evidently it must have been a, a conclusive test uh, uh-huh. with no uh, uh-huh. adverse effects or something. Uh-huh. There was one detail I wanted to check with you. According to the Jim Bishop book, which admittedly isn't, isn't any kind of an authority, when you gave the polygraph exam to this guy, there were there were uh, five officers standing either in the room no. or in the in the doorway. No, nobody stands in the room with me when I give a test. That's what I that's what I thought. That, that's I don't know. I'm not certainly not. An no, I don't I don't remember about like that. I don't remember even giving the test specifically. You know. Yeah. But I just don't nobody ever stand in the room with me when I give a test. Just you just your standard practice would be to to, to just you and the, right. the subject. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, and uh, as, uh, you never gave a test to, to Oswald. No. Okay. Okay, well, look, I'm sorry to bother you again. I just okay. wanted to clear up that one detail, and I certainly appreciate you for uh, taking the time to talk to me. You bet, anytime. Okay, bye now. Bye-bye. One has to make up one's own mind as to what the significance of all this is, but I think I should point out that... Uh, Buell Wesley Frazier is the uh, only source of the story that Oswald claimed uh, of the brown paper package 
that he allegedly brought to the book depository contained curtain rods. And uh, Frazier and his sister are the only witnesses who can even attest that there was a, a brown paper package. This was a keystone uh, to the Warren Commission's theory that Oswald was a lone nut because if he decided the day before the assassination to go out to Irving to get his gun, then obviously it was, in fact, uh, a spur-of-the-moment uh, decision, and it was not a concerted effort by a conspiracy. Thus, uh, Buell Wesley Frazier's credibility is really pivotal uh, to the Warren Commission's uh, lone assassin, lone nut theory. Um, and it is extremely interesting that the polygraph uh, examination was given in the first place, uh, that it was given while uh, Buell Wesley Frazier was under arrest and his Enfield rifle uh, had been uh, seized by the police. Um, and I think it is interesting and perhaps very significant that uh, R.D. Lewis uh, denies any recollection of being called from his home in the middle of the night to give a polygraph examination related to the investigation of a presidential assassination, uh, that Richard Stovall denied being present during the test uh, when he had uh, sworn that he was before the Warren Commission 10 years ago. Um, and uh, I think it's uh, very significant that Lieutenant Hill claimed that Captain Fritz didn't believe in the polygraph and that therefore the examination uh, could not have taken place. Uh, because this is a very gratuitous falsehood, and uh, it sounds as though it were offered in desperation. R.D. Lewis uh, never testified before the Warren Commission, uh, never signed an affidavit, and never gave any sworn testimony uh, to the substance of this matter. And I should hope that in any new investigation, he and Frazier and the other principals uh, would be called uh, to discuss this once again under oath.